Hey everybody, so you're a guitarist in a band, but your band don't have any gigs right now because we're all stuck inside, and so you've turned to creating lo-fi hip-hop beats on your computer. If any of that hit too close to home, I apologize and I sympathize dearly. So you have all your expensive and favorite guitar pedal effects and they're not getting the use that they usually do. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you insert effects like this into your computer workflow. Coming up. So there are lots of really great distortion and saturation plugins available for the computer and I use them all the time. But on the theme of this video, I want to show you some of the benefits of incorporating hardware aspects into computer workflow. And I'm not suggesting super expensive hardware. Uh, for example, we're gonna use a super cheap Behringer OD100 pedal, which is great and it's a lot of fun to use and it sounds good too. Now let's get into how you set this up. The way I'm doing this uh, is going to require that you have a digital audio interface that has more than two outputs. That means more than the two outputs that will that go to your monitors, say. It is probably possible with two, but that's not how I'm doing it. Anyway, this is how you do it. So you're going to take a line output from the additional output of your interface and put that into the input of the device you want to use. And then you take the output of the device you want to use and bring that back into an input on your interface. So now that your device is hooked up into your interface, you can now open up your DAW of choice and you can insert the plugin which offers the hardware insert options. And within that plugin, like the one in Logic, you select the output in which the signal is being sent out from, and then you select the input which the, uh, the signal from the device is being sent into. And before immediately trying to send sound through the device, it's, it will be important to check that the device isn't fully cranked so that you're not gonna get a nasty surprise. So, now let's have some fun. So the first thing I want to try and thro throw upon it is my ART Tube Mic Preamp. The specific model is actually the Tube MP-C because it also has a built-in opto compressor and limiter. So if I, uh, I'm just gonna check if the uh, it is patched in correctly. Looks like it. The MP-C is coming in on input seven. So we've got no sound now, but if you look at the LEDs, uh, you could just about make out the fact that the uh, tube drive uh, LEDs are actually going up and down. So if, uh, if I bring up the output, So uh, this, so this device out of all of them is probably the most neutral sound, more or less unintelligibly different actually. Up until we start uh, getting the uh, gain up on the tube uh, drive section, and that's where we start hearing a difference. Uh, I'll demonstrate that now. So if I loop this. In the true drive section, we're coming up to uh, the red, and we're get we're getting into clipping territory. And uh, you'll start hearing the f like when it starts clipping very clearly. Like a few of those notes started uh, getting a bit fuzzy. That's, and that's where it starts breaking up. So if, uh, let's see what happens if we really crank it. That's quite interesting. It, uh, it changes it entirely. It sounds like a totally different sound. In. totally different. It's crazy, right? Now let's try something really different. Let's try out the Behringer OD100. Right, 
So the Behringer is rooted in now. This pedal is definitely going to be a little bit more aggressive than the MP-C. It'll immediately have an effect on the signal. The mode function has a um, this one. The mode function here, if you if I got that on the camera, uh, has a has a massive sweep in terms of tonal sound quality. Like it, uh, all the way to the left, you've got uh, the overdrive uh, voicing, and then all the way to the right, you have the distortion voicing. I'll I'll, I'll sweep through them really quickly. <laughs> Actually, also another side note, um, I haven't turned up the drive at all yet. So it's my personal taste that I'm not too fond of the, the distortion uh, characteristic all the way to the right, uh, but I instead like to find somewhere in the middle or closer to the uh, overdrive section because I do like the, the much more top saturation that I get with the distortion voicing, but I also want to mix that in with the mid-range voicing that the overdrive has. So in that position it seems to be rolling off a lot more top end. Uh, I quite like to have a little bit of that fizzy top end so I, I mix it somewhere in between. Now let's see what happens if we actually turn up the drive function, eh? That's turning up the tone a bit. That's got some real character to it. I really like that. And it's a really cheap pedal. The other effect I've actually got next to it is the uh, Boss Super Octave, which I've, I'll get a little bit of footage here. Um, we can have a little bit of fun with this and add a little uh, sub octave. Bassy tone. Let's bypass the uh, insert entirely and then we'll come back to it and we'll see what the difference is because it, it's pretty huge. Beef. So that was a lot of fun. Again, it completely changed the sound of the thing entirely. That got thick. It had a lot of it had a lot of richness to it. Right, so now I want to show you what the bass sounds like through the Laney Ironheart Studio guitar amplifier. I really like this amp on guitar, and it seems to sound quite good to me for this use as well. So let me show you. <laughs> This is on the clean channel of the amp and it's already adding a bit of saturation to it, adding a bit of just interest and warmth. Each band has a push-pull system which then changes the nature of that uh, boost or cut frequency. For instance, the bass band, when pulled out, it goes super low. And becomes a lot more subby. I really like this. Let's go between the two again. Uh, 
again, totally different. Just adding these harmonics and this distortion and character by putting it through an external device, it brings life to like a sterile, dry and digital synthesizer. And for the giggles, let's put it on the distortion channel. <laughs> That's not even at level two. Cool, I really like that. And again, when you when you apply effects like this, you can go back to the synthesizer itself and adjust parameters to work to taste. The synthesizer itself is cutting out a lot of um, top end information. I did that purposefully because when you put distortion on things, you might have noticed that it adds a lot of like top end treble information. And the thing about that is if if you add too much on the way in, it'll be it will become quite abrasive probably. Let's put that theory to the test. That's the amp's uh, inbuilt reverb. That's adding some interesting space to the sound. Yeah, you'll probably find that d devices, you know, like this will have like multiple uses, multiple effects that you can add. You know, it's all about playing around and seeing what works for you. So that's the end of this video. I hope you learned a thing or two about inserting hardware effects and guitar pedals and other things into your computer workflow so that you can add a bit of color and a bit of more manual control into your computer way of working. See you in the next one. Bye.